Hello everyone. Welcome back to your second lecture. Our today's topic is Zeppelin notebooks. To understand what Zeppelin notebooks are, first we need to understand the concept of notebook interface. A notebook interface, also called as computational notebook, is a virtual notebook environment used for literate pro programming. It pairs the functionality of word processing software with both shell and kernel of that notebook programming language. The notebook interface was first introduced in 1988 with the release of Wolf Farm Mathematica on Mac. It was followed by 1989 when their first notebook Style GUI was released with version 4.3 for Mac. As the notebook interface increased in popularity, over next two, two decades, kernel, backends, to notebooks for many languages were introduced. These notebooks provide a digital learning environment, its utility for combining text with code makes them unique in the realm of education. Some of the free open source notebooks are Jupyter Notebooks, IPython, R Markdown, Apache Zeppelin, etc. Here we will start discussing about Apache Zeppelin. It is one of the open source web based tool in data scientist workbench. Zeppelin notebooks are multi purpose notebooks that can handle all your analytics needs from data ingestion, data discovery, data analytics to data visualization and collaboration. The Zeppelin interpreter concept allows any language or data processing backend to be plugged into Zeppelin. Apache Zeppelin in particular provides built-in Apache Spark integration. You don't need to build a separate module plugin or library for it. Apache plugin with Spark integration provides a number of great features including automatic Spark context and SQL context injection, runtime jar dependency loading from local file system or Maven repository, as well as cancelling job and progress display. For data visualization, here are some basic charts ready included in Apache Zeppelin. Visualizations are not limited to Apache SQL. Query in fact. Any output from any language backend can be recognized and visualized. For pivot charts, Apache Zeppelin aggregates values and displays them in pivot chart with simple drag and drop. You can easily create charts with simply aggregated values including sum, count, average, minimum and maximum. For dynamic forms, Apache Zeppelin can dynamically create some input forms in your notebook. Apache Zeppelin is Apache 2 licensed software. So please check out more repository and how to contribute. Moving on to our next topic, that is Zeppelin for Scala. Zeppelin for Scala, which reads data from a comma separated file, that is CSV, and uses Spark to convert it into a Spark data frame. 
to get started click the zeppelin notebook here you can see the notebook button on the main page the zeppelin welcome page opens this is the welcome page then click the tutorial for scala link this launches the notebook that we will run through the first part of the tutorial describes the interpreter binding settings namely for spark percentage spark is the default md angular and sh these are the kernels or interpreters that you select to be available in your notebooks as a user you can simply click on save the first step in the tutorial downloads the bank.csv as you can see that we have downloaded the bank file here this was bank one You will need to import the packages that are needed for this tutorial. The second step converts the .csv file to RDD by running the script. I hope you remember what RDD was. We have studied in Spark. The third step cleans the data using map and filter, which basically does three things. First, it creates an RDD of tuples from the original bank text. Second, it creates the schema represented to define the name and type of column. And it applies the schema to RDD. The fourth step creates a data frame using 2DF function. A data frame is a distributed collection of data organized into named columns. It is conceptually equivalent to a table in a relational database or a data frame in R5. The fifth step registers the data frame as a temporary table. The sixth step retrieves the data. Now the bank table can be easily queried with SQL commands. And finally, the seventh step visualizes the data. Some basic charts are already included in Zeppelin. Okay, so next, let's get started with Zeppelin. Zeppelin notebooks help you with all your analytic needs including data ingestion, data discovery, data analytics and data visualization and collaboration. To get started with Zeppelin notebooks on Data Scientist Workbench, once you are on the main page, just click on the Zeppelin notebook button. When the Zeppelin window page opens, you will find a number of links on the left that work with the notebook. The links on the right point to Zeppelin documentation and the community. Let's begin by focusing on what can be done with notebooks. First, to import a note, just click the import note button. By default, the name of the imported note is the same as the original note, but you can override it by providing a new name. To create a new note, click the create new note button. When you do this, a new empty Zeppelin notebook displays. On the top right corner of each paragraph, there will be some commands that will allow you to execute the paragraph code. From this dialog, you can control paragraph width. And since 
Zeppelin is using the grid system of Twitter bootstrap. Each paragraph width can be changed from 1 to 12. You can move from paragraph 1 level up. Change paragraph title, show, hide, line number in the port section. Disable the run button for this paragraph. Export the current paragraph as an iframe and then delete the current paragraph. On the right side of the node toolbar, you can find configuration icons. Display all the keyboard shortcuts, configure the interpreter's binding to the current node and switch the node display mode between default, simple and report. Now, moving on to our next topic, that will be how to manage interpreters in Zeppelin notebooks. Interpreter is a plugin which enables Zeppelin users to use a specific language and data processing back. For example, to use Scala code in Zeppelin, you need the percentage spark interpreter. Currently, Apache Zeppelin supports many interpreters such as Apache Spark, Python, JDBC, Markdown, and Shell. Once you are on the DSWB welcome page, click the Zeppelin notebook and the Zeppelin welcome page opens. To manage or edit your interpreters, your Zeppelin welcome page, click interpreters. Here you can see. Scrolling down, you can see the MD, SH and Angular section properties. You can manage each of your interpreter settings by using the edit, restart or remove button on the top right. Please note that after you make your changes, you will need to restart your interpreter to have the change that effect. Click the create button to add a new property. To create a new property value for your interpreter, give it a name, select one of the interpreter types from the drop down, then specify the name and value for each property that you have added. You can also remove a particular interpreter setting by clicking the remove button and then confirming the deletion. To return to DSWB homepage, just click button on the top left. Now let's discuss about Apache Spark in Zeppelin notebooks. Apache Zeppelin with Spark integration provides a number of great features including automatic Spark context and SQL context ingestion runtime as well as cancelling job and progress display and since Apache Spark is pre-installed in data scientist's workbench, you don't need to configure it. Spark context, SQL context and Zeppelin context are automatically created and exposed as variable names SC, SQL context and Z, both in Scala and Python environments. There are two ways to load an external library in Spark interpreter. First is using interpreter setting menu and second is loading Spark properties. To learn how to do this for the Zeppelin context, Zeppelin automatically injects Zeppelin context as a variable Z in your Scala Python environment. Zeppelin context provides some additional functions as utility. 
discipline context extends map and is shared between Scala and Python environments. This means you can put in some object from Scala and read it from Python and vice versa. Here are the commands on Scala and these are the commands for Python. For the interpreter settings options, you can choose one of the following shared, scooped or isolated. Spark interpreter creates a separate Scala compiler as per notebook but shares a single Spark context in scooped mode. To set up Zeppelin with Kerbos, you can follow the video. I will share the links with you as it was already there in a cognitive class .ai that was that you were supposed to do as your online course. So with this we come to an end to this video. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome back. The topic for today is our studio. Before starting, what actually is our studio? Let us see what is it used for. Originally, it was designed for our programming language. Now, you would say, what is our programming language? Basically, R is a free, open source software and programming language developed in 1995 at the University of Auckland as an environment for statistical computing and graphics. Since then, R has become one of the dominant software environments for data analysis and is used by a variety of scientific disciplines. R is particularly popular for its graphical capabilities but is also prized for its GIS capabilities which makes it relatively easy to generate raster based models. Now the next question that you must be thinking would be why should you learn R language? Well, R offers numerous advantages such as the first point could be cost. R is free of cost. Second, reproducible research that is it is self-documenting and also repeatable that is code and output can be in a single document. Third point is it has numerous discipline specific or community groups. That means it can be created to learn and discuss about R. Fourth point, it has plenty of resources in quantity as well as quality. Fifth point, R is now become becoming a new norm or standard. So that is why R is important. Now let's discuss about what is R Studio. That is our main topic for today's lecture. So to dig in, R Studio is an integrated development environment that means IDE for R, a programming language as I told you for statistical computing and graphics. It is available in two formats. RStudio Desktop is a regular desktop application while RStudio server runs on a remote server 
and allows our studio using web browser our studio is available with the gne fro general public license that is agpl license version 3 it is an open source and guarantees the freedom to share the code in addition to our studio ide our studio inc and its employees develop maintain and promote a number of art packages these include shiny r markdown tensor flow tidy models etc the r studio ide provides a mechanism for executing r functions from within ide through addons menu this enables packages to include gui for increased accessibility now let us see how the files are uploaded the packages are being installed or libraries have been uploaded into the r studio ide so as you must have been known or understood about what packages generally are here packages are collection of r functions data and compiled code in a well defined format the directory where packages are stored is called the library r comes with a standard set of packages others are available for download and installation once installed they have to be loaded into the session to be used now for adding the package you need to follow two steps the first step is you need to download and install the particular package that you need and the second step will be to use this package invoke the library command to load it into the current session you can install on windows as well as linux now let's get started with our studio there are six basic steps to be followed when you start an r studio so the first step that you must know is how to install an r studio the second step is identify the data set on which you need to work third step install google sheets package four import the data that you must have identified earlier in the second step fifth transform the data according to set standards as you know that data should be transformed and cleaned before processing as we have discussed so many times in our class now the last point will be create line graph now the first step says how to install the r studio now let's get get to its website and download r studio here is a first link we'll just click it and here you will see choose your version so basically here you can see that our studio is available in four commercial three commercial licenses and one open source license so we need to download just the open source license for now as we are working or learning right now 
here you can see that what all features they must be having here as I told you this is having a GPL license now as we move down you can see here it is first written install R that is you must install the R programming language first and then download the R studio desktop as I told you before it has two versions that is R studio desktop and R studio server now all installers this is basically for the Linux as it is written that Linux users may need to import R studio public coding signing key prior to installation depending upon the operating system security policy so this part is basically for the Linux users and this is that the package is available in zip or tarbox ok so let's move up and try downloading this free license ok here we go and our R studio is being installed so we'll come back later on and see how it can be opened and installed further for now let's move on to our next question that is R studio environment and history so R studio is developed by R Studio INC, a commercial enterprise founded by JJ Eliot, creator of programming language Code Fusion. R Studio INC has no format connection sorry, to R Foundation, which is responsible for development of R environment for statistical computing so basically when R studio was being developed there was no formal connection connection between the R programming language and the R studio initially it was developed on its own independently okay so now to understand what R Studio basically is, we need to see that it has several packages. As you have studied what Spark is, so here it is easy for me to make you people understand that how Apache Spark is working in R Studio IDE. Okay, so here the package Sparkler is used. It has four basic steps. The first step is connect to Spark from R. The Sparkler package provides a complete deployer backend. The second point is filter and aggregate Spark datasets then bring them into R for analysis and visualization. Use Spark's distributed machine learning library for R. And the last point is create extensions that call the full Spark API and provides interface to Spark packages. So this is how Apache Spark is being used in R Studio IDE. Now let us see if our R Studio is being downloaded. Still it has time. it is taking some time so for now what I will do is I will just make a more 
video for you people to make you people understand what R Studio is once it is installed. So for now, thank you so much. Okay, so now our R Studio is installed. Let us try download it. Let us open it and install in our on our PC. So right now it is verifying the installer. Okay. Yes, the directory where it is installed. Okay, install. Now it is being installed as you can see. Alright, so the installation is completed. Now let's finish the setup. And open our R Studio. asking us that which version of R do we need to use so for now I am using my machine's default version that is 64 bit clicking on ok ok so now it is saying that R does not appear to be installed please install R before using R studio so what we need to do is you can just download R from the official website so yes we need to Download it first. Yeah. Okay, so it is saying that we should restart the R Studio again to enter these effects. Let's first do us. Let's go to R and install R. So here we go, and we are downloading R for Windows. Binaries for base distribution. This is what you want to install R for the first time. Okay. Download R 3.6.3 for Windows. Now, our R language or our programming language is being downloaded. It will take about one minute. Download two minutes.
Let us discuss the discuss the pros and cons of our programming language. First of all, R is an open source language because obviously it is free as I told you before. It has exclamatory support for R wrangling. That means R provides exclamatory support for data wrangling. The packages like Deployer that I told you in your previous video, Reader, are capable for transforming messy data into structured data. As I told you that uh, we need to transform our data first before loading it. Third, it has array of packages. That means R has a vast array of packages with over 10,000 packages in the CRAN repository. The number is constantly growing. These packages appeal to all the areas of industry. Fourth point, quality plotting and graphing. R facilitates quality plotting and graphing. The popular libraries like GGPL or 2 and Plotly advocate for aesthetic and visually appealing graphs that set R apart from other programming languages. Fifth point is that it is highly compatible. R is highly compatible and can be paired with many other programming languages like C, C++, Java, etc. It can also be integrated with technologies like Hadoop, various other database management systems as well. Sixth point is that it is platform independent. It is a cross-platform plat cross programming language, meaning that it can be run quite easily on Windows, Linux and Mac. Seventh, it creates eye-catching reports because of its new or you can say um, good capability of making highly attractive graphs. With packages like Shiny and Markdown as I told you in your previous video, Reporting the results of an analysis is extremely easy with R. You can make reports with the data, plots and R scripts embedded in them. You can even make interactive web apps that allows the user to play with the results and the data. Next, it uses machine learning operations. R provides various facilities for uh, carrying out machine learning operations like classification, regression and also provides feature for developing artificial neural networks. Ninth point, statistics. R is prominently, prominently known as the lingua franca of statistics. This is the main reason as to why R is dominant among, among the pro programming languages for developing statistical tools. Tenth point, R is constantly evolving programming language. It is the state of R technology that provides updates whenever a new feature is added. So these were the basic advantages of our language. So now our, our programming language is being installed. So let us open it first. Alright. So now let us start with our R studio again. So now 
now are our programming languages being installed right now here we go so now we are done let's start with our R studio again basically the interface of our R studio that is being loaded right now and here we go so the, this part is the console part where you type in R programming language just type the commands and here you can see the environment the history part and the connections that you will established through making add-ins or packages and here are the files that you need or the data that you need like suppose I have this book data and landscape etc so, so from here you can just pick any data that you want to uh, use and process it so this is how we install and how we use our studio Okay, thank you for now.